trying to make a way. Well, it's more than being a woman in terms of what this film's about, I think, because uh, there were a number of women who broke the glass ceiling and were in politics long before me. But in 94, when I was elected, I was the first openly gay or lesbian person in the California legislature. Uh, and in some ways, of course, it was still difficult to be a woman, but in some ways not, uh, because Willie Brown had been speaker for a long time and he brought a lot of women into leadership while he was speaker, uh, a lot of women of color. But it was very different for us because there was a lot of homophobia. And in 94, when the Republicans took a majority for the first time in 30 years, there was a lot of overt homophobia. So um, I think that it was a kind of a combination, but for lesbians, you can see the first four in were all women it was, in a sense, easier than it was because gay men still had more uh, homophobia directed towards them in those days. And what was the most powerful moment for you in terms of, like, you'd, you'd seen you'd taken a step forward, or what was the... Tell me about what inspired you. Uh, in, in the legislature, the most powerful moment for me was August of 1999 when the Gay Student Bill finally passed. Uh, we needed 41 votes. We had 40 all year, couldn't get the 41st vote. And then finally, at the very end of the session in 99, we got it. And when my staff, who had worked on this for six years with me, and I walked out of the floor and down the halls of the Capitol, everybody came out of their offices and applauded us while we walked down. I mean, it was something you don't see in the movie because no one was filming it but everyone really understood what a struggle this had been and that was the first bill that passed uh, that protected gay people in the state I just was thinking before you guys came here that it's interesting to me that when you're trying to break through something, you know, old ideas or whatever, that there's always like the old idea that raises itself up and fights harder to keep alive. And it seems that way right now in the current political, you know, like there couldn't be a more, I think, anti-woman. <laughs> and I mean, and then you add gay one, but that's not what Hillary is. But I mean, like, it's so interesting that women are trying to get move forward and and then you have this really strongly misogynistic element that's, you know, coming up. What do you, did you find that to be true that there? I think people have a very short memory about how much hatred there is expressed in every single election. Um, I've voted quite a few times in my life and it feels to me like every time there's something, especially at the more local level, because it was often just white straight men running against each other for president after a while, but there's always the element, although it's gotten worse and worse and worse, in terms of how empowered it feels to spew hatred. But as you can see in this film, people always felt empowered to spew hatred. Uh, people who were elected talking to us right on the floor of the assembly about how we were spawn of the devil and, uh, you know, didn't deserve to be alive and our children didn't deserve protection and blah, blah, blah. So I know people, it's true, this is very salient for this moment. And, and any time before that, you see this hatred. Is that, how did you withstand that? I mean, did you just know who you are and so they, they can't take that from you and it doesn't matter what they say? Or how, how do you get through that? What did you use inside of you to get through that? Well, I think the, uh, it's funny, n nothing that was said that was negative, that was hurled at us, really made me cry. What made me cry was when one of my colleagues would stand up and support us and for the first time in his life talk about his gay brother who died of AIDS. First time in his life speaking publicly on the floor of the assembly. Uh, or their sister, or their daughter, or their mother. I mean, you know, I never told anybody, but I, my, I had two mothers, you know. Um, that brings tears to my eyes in the way many scenes in the movie do, uh, because people are touched. In term, I didn't run till I was in my 50s. So there was no question, I knew who I was. But um, it still, standing there, I mean, we would have three and four hour debates on the floor from which many of the scenes are taken. Uh, and you would just be hearing this over and over and over and over. Um, and, you know, sometimes my colleagues would think that it was so hard on me that they would come over, this is unprecedented. They would walk over to my chair and just put 
a hand on my shoulder or say, you know, you're doing okay, because hours of this kind of debate about whether gay people were human or not. So it was, um, it was actually wonderful. Uh, and we knew exactly how historic it was when we were going through it. And the last one, you'll have money <laughs> Jackie Goldberg. Nice to meet you. Christine Kehoe. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hi, Cheryl Marley. Oh, you know Cheryl. <laughs> so tell me, what was the, mo the thing that inspired you the most to keep you moving forward in this, in your career? Oh, it's hard to say. I think it was really the fact that there were so many people whose lives would be changed irrevocably if we were able to make progress with some of the issues that were facing our community. Ja Jackie and I were in the same class. We we're going up to the assembly. We went in at the same time, so um, we have that in common. It was a we were the next two of the yeah. four lesbians. Um, but I think what motivated me most, especially in the assembly, was a sense of responsibility. I was lucky enough to get there. Uh, I was the first uh, openly LGBT person elected in San Diego County. Uh, so getting up to the state level was a big step and. I, I never wanted to disappoint my constituents, and um, and she didn't, and she didn't ever. Ja and well, we could say a lot about each other, yeah. but Jack, Jackie, uh, Jackie's, uh, you know, political analysis and her dedication to, you know, fundamental uh, equality and things. I think has a little more depth than my personal experience. I was um, kind of uh, lucky to be a locally elected official that was able to move up the ladder, as Jackie was, but you know, my, my experience comes out of community organizing, gay pride, and uh, community associations, lesbian solidarity, things like that, and I love the activity. Yeah, and I started in the anti-war movement and also in the civil rights movement. I was very active in both. And was arrested in several of them and uh, really just stayed involved actively. And then, of course, in the women's movement, uh, and that moved us into the lesbian, gay, and bisexual and transgender movement. So, you know, and now, now I think uh, is important is to push on with the transgender rights because that's a community that is really, really seriously oppressed, much in the same way our community was earlier on and much in the way uh, people of color were earlier on. So I think each movement kinds of builds on the other and we learn things from each other and fortunately uh, we're learning to be sure that we're connected to each other and we support each other's struggles because it really is the same struggle. It's a struggle against those people who say there's only one way to be and that's how I am and the heck with all the rest of you guys. I was just, I've been thinking about this before I came here that it seems like whenever things are going to change the old way sort of rises up and and in a louder Life's voice and and that is kind of what's happening in the political scene for the president right now, it seems yeah. like. How did you, so I'm sure it happened with you and, and the work that you do. Like, how did you withstand the attacks, the really nasty? Solidarity. Clinging to each other. Yeah, it was true. And, and also we had really incredible colleagues amongst non uh, among straight people in the, in the Democratic caucus. Not all of them, but most of them. And many of them were really outstanding, really outstanding, in a way that was not just, I support your good cause, but who felt what we were trying to, to express and who said, I'm with you. So we had a lot of support from each other. I remember I was shocked when I went up to the assembly at how blatant the hostility was to lesbians and gays and to women uh, and to environmental issues. I mean, at the city council level, it's nonpartisan. In San Diego, you know, maybe it's perceived as a little conservative, but people pretty much get along. Up there, it was no holes barred. You know, um, I wanted to mocking, my first week I was there. mocking, sarcastic comments on the floor during session. I was amazed. Yeah. I was amazed and shocked I was and too. very disappointed. And we, 
we push that back. That that is you don't hear those kind of speeches anymore for the most part. For the most part, yeah. co-directors. Oh, great, wonderful. So, why don't you uh, tell me what inspired you to do this film? Um, well, we originally met Carol Migdon was our first point of contact, and. Um, after meeting her, we found out that not only was Carol one of the first uh, openly gay state representatives, but actually that there were four women that got elected before any men did. And I think that was the initial spark of saying, wow, there's, here's a situation where four women were able to get elected at a state level before any men were. That seems like a gender anomaly in politics, and I wonder why that was. And that was our first sort of um, entrance into the film, and then we just kind of got more and more excited the more we got to know these incredible, incredible women. We've done so much. And I think a lot of people are familiar with men in the LGBT civil rights movement, but not that many people are familiar with the women who fought really hard for everyone's rights, so <clears throat> we really wanted to give the women credit where credit was due. That seems to be um, an issue right now, sort of. I, I've noticed, and I've been talking about this today, that when something's about to change big time, there's the old voice of stay quiet gets really loud and, and, and nasty. And so it's, uh, did that kind of inspire you as well to be doing this work? Um, well, honestly, you know, we were inspired by all of the work that these women did, not just for um, gay marriage and marriage equality, which has obviously really become the thing that has made people aware of the LGBT civil rights struggle. Um, but I don't think it was like a driving force for us. Um, it did change as we were filming the movie, of course, as marriage equality passed. And, you know, Carol Migdon wrote the first domestic partnership laws that were enacted by a legislature. Um, so, you know, the whole zeitgeist has changed around gay politics and become all about marriage. Um, but these women were advocating for rights before they even saw that as being, they all even say that, in, I think in the film, all of them say, they didn't think that would happen in their lifetime. They weren't even fighting for that. They were just fighting for basic protections. So that was the story we really wanted to tell. Yeah, no, I, I just think um, these women are, are really incredible that they have been fighting for all kinds of rights, not just marriage equality, but uh, to protect students from bullying. And there's still a lot of work to be done. There's still a lot of states where people can be discriminated against because of their gender or sexual orientation. And even in the United States, we didn't ever pass the Equal Rights Amendment, so women are still discriminated against as well. So tell me about what inspired you to do the work that you do. You know, I knew I had the capability, and I was a 60s girl and into politics and moved to California, live in San Francisco, met Harvey Milk, you know, and uh, I always thought that I had the capacity to make that difference because I wasn't intimidated by men. <laughs> and I'm the kind of woman, you know, the butchest women were discriminated against. The women that didn't look particularly gay lived more of a privileged life, and I'll put myself in that category. And uh, I just knew I had a mission. And, and being in the legislature is like being a tenant. You have a certain amount of time on your lease. And there were, I wanted to do a lot about HIV, about foster care, and about same-sex couples in addition to carrying a pretty strong general bill load. I had the privilege of being the appropriations chair, which is a tremendously powerful position. Sheila was chair of judiciary. So even if you hear those remarks hurled, the fact was we were very well respected and powerful within the body. And how, how did you withstand the backlash that, that came with? You know, if you, you get you get your whole life, you know, and if, uh, I'm a Jew and I've heard anti-Semitic remarks, so to me, uh, I don't expect everyone to believe what I believe. And I think we've chained people a little bit and we gain the votes. And that takes hard work and that takes perseverance and just deciding that. See, and that's a good lesson. Because I think young people get twittered away and not necessarily understand delayed gratification and how to take building blocks to really create something that is this kind of magnificent a change. It, it, I mean, there is, to shift it, it's like, somebody said, like turning a boat. I mean, it takes a while, like, to move. To it's move. unbelievable in a short span of time uh, that there is same-sex marriage approved. 
And there were no riots in the street when that court decision was made. And, and in many ways accepted, and we still have hurdles, and we have to uh, protect people in their jobs and, and housing, and there's more work to be done. But without question, the fact that our relationships, and therefore our children, became valid does give us an enormous, solid, unmovable platform and set of achievements on which we can build. And look at kids today. Uh, they're sort of looking at gender issues and, and figuring out what that means and, and being very open early. And, and, and that's something brand new. Uh, and parents are wanting to respond, you know. So, so it feels like, like a, a lid, a valve got open maybe, a lot of steam and pressure coming out, but it's really good, the byproduct. Yeah. Hi.